What's up, divas and divos? So you guys already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday. As you guys can see, I am back at home. I had like an amazing time in New York. I didn't really want to come back, but then I did want to come back. You guys know like when you go on vacation or my instant vacation, it's like, okay, do I really want to come back? And then when you come back, it's like you miss your home. Everything looks different because you've been gone for so long. But then you're like, I haven't really been gone for so long because the time went by like super duper fast. Like I was waiting like forever for the trip. It felt like forever. You know what I'm saying? From the date that I purchased the ticket, which was in December 11th. And so it felt like time was not really moving slow, but you know, just like kind of like generic or like normal. And then when I left, the 10 days just like went by like that and it felt like I was just back on that plane. Okay. So time does go by super duper quick. So I really did enjoy myself and me and my mom had a blast. We did go to the American Girl store in Manhattan. You guys know she lives in Queens. So I was with her. Um, also, um, we did go to the Museum of Natural History, the American Museum of Natural History. We used to spend hours and hours upon hours there as a, um, at, when I was a child, she would take me there almost like twice a month and we would get on this number seven train and we would just take this train all the way to the Museum of Natural History. And I would always have like this really good blast, um, of a time with her and we would just watch and look at everything. I, I don't think I ever got bored with going to the Museum of Natural History. I just know that as a kid, I went many different times. So it was just like an amazing time. This time when it was just me and her, it was kind of like, it was weird because it was more or less like, there I was as a kid going and I was just like this little bitty kid. And you know, I would go up until like the age of 10 and 11 and stuff like that and 12 and 13. And then now here it is. Um, well, you guys already know I'm in my forties and 43 years old. Yes, I'm 43. And my mom is, you know, 20 years older than me. So here it is. It's like, we went back to revisit like what we always used to do. So it was so much fun just being there with her. We was acting silly. We was having like a really great time. And also we just noticed like really new exhibits that was, you know, put in, put into the Museum of Natural History and like additions. And you know, what's really cool about though, um, back in June, she went again, I think it was like in June when my son Wuzzle went to visit her. Um, and so that was his very first time going. And, you know, he's 19. So he had a blast. She said that he took so many pictures. She couldn't even imagine that his phone could store so many pictures. So they they stayed in the museum for hours and he just really, really enjoyed himself. So it was really cool for him to be able to spend that time with her as well and just like venture out. And me as well, I had like an amazing time with her. Um, and we also, like I said, we went to the American Girl Store, American Girl Doll Store, because my mom, you know, in case you guys don't know, she does sew. She's a seamstress. She sews for a living. And not really just sews for a living, but she does have a job and she's more or less kind of like semi-retired. So she really doesn't need to work but she does because she just doesn't want to sit at home and have nothing at all to do. So, um, she does work and, um, she works just probably like two days a week at Burlington. And, um, so what she does do, she does sew. So that's where I learned my craft of learning how to make clothes. But anyway, so she used to make doll clothes, Barbie doll clothes. You know, you guys know I've had like millions of Barbie doll clothes if you watch my recent video, but she makes American girl doll clothing. Okay. So she makes American girl doll clothing and she makes like the bomber stuff, but she really wanted an American girl doll to model her clothing, which makes a lot of sense. You know what I'm saying? I was going to give her one of Momsy's fake American Girl dolls. Not really a fake, but it's like one of the Toys R Us brand versions, but she wanted a real, real one. So I promised her that I would buy her one for her birthday. Okay. And, um, I was going to have a ship to her because I was going to be here. Her birthday is in February. I didn't really have plans on being there. So, um, I took her to the store. It was my first time ever going there. That was her first time ever going there. And it was really fun. We learned the history of American Girl doll. And my mom, she ended up getting the doll that was born in the year that she was born, which was 1954. And her actual birthday is this coming February of the 9th of February. So she got this doll because she wanted like a particular looking doll. And this particular doll had her birthday. So each doll represents like a 
an event in life. You know what I'm saying? In case you guys don't know. But there are the American Girl dolls that are like, I don't know, truly mine or truly me where you can customize them to look like yourself, which really isn't like an American Girl doll. These dolls started out like 30 years ago. I was so unaware of that. And each doll has like an event that they they symbolize and which is so amazing. So like they had the Addie doll, which was an African-American doll and her parents were slaves and they were seamstress. It was just like a really, really cool story. This one of the workers told me and I was just like so amazed because I'm not really into those things, those dolls. Like I don't really like the American Girl dolls. Um, they just kind of kind of like creep me out. I don't really like the eyes especially the ones with the black eyes. So, and I just really didn't find a need to be spending that much on a doll for little girls. But you know, the um, whole reason for the American girl doll has changed over the years. Like we got these little girls now who just want the doll because they want it and they have the furniture and it's things like that. But it really stands for something totally different. So when I found out about what it stood for and what it symbolizes, it just changed my whole outlook, my whole perspective of the doll itself. Now, would I still want, would I want to buy one for myself? No, I wouldn't. But um, I would definitely buy them for my mom because she really likes them. So I guess I get the fun out of buying them for her. So she got a very first American girl dog um and i'm so happy for her because she absolutely loves her and um i think her name is miriam her name is marianne or Miriam, something like that um and she loves them so and i the thing i like the most about them is the furniture like their accessories their furniture i think they have like the coolest furniture but if i was to have like start collecting american girl dolls they would have to have their own room because i would probably want like every piece of furniture that they would have because I'm just like that, okay? Um, I do like one of them, which is Julie. She was born in the year I was, but she was out of stock. She's more like the hippie year. It was really cool because my mom was like, remember you used to dress like that? When you was a teenager, you used to have them love peace, peace signs and flower power because I used to design my own clothes. So it kind of like was like, okay, she kind of do look like not look like me but the way she dressed but anyway it was so much fun we had like a blast and um we went out to eat let me tell you something it is freezing cold out there not even freezing cold because i was used to that but i just was not used to the wind because i haven't felt the wind in my face in like four years so that part was like whoo child way too cold in my face felt like my lips was about to freeze off and it's just like really really crowded in new york city but i'm i'm always happy to go back home because you know what i'm saying it makes me appreciate appreciate my childhood. It makes me appreciate who I am today. And I just love to visit my family. So I had a wonderful time. And then when I was upstate New York, you know, me and my son, my grandson, my daughter-in-law, my husband, we had like an amazing time. Um, we went to Dave and Buster's. We hung out. Um, we went out to dinner. And my little grandson, he is something else. He's so cute and he's so bad. It's just like, he's the good and the bad. You know what I'm saying? Um, we had just like a really great time and I was so happy to be able to be there. But like I was saying like last week, um, I don't really miss anything about Schenectady, New York. Like seriously, because it just seems like it's so gloomy. It's very, very gloomy to me. No sunshine. I don't even care if it was cold, you know what I'm saying? But I don't really see like it's so gloomy because there's no sunshine. But I still do like to visit because, you know, my son is living there and my grandson is living there and my daughter-in-law is living there and my husband is living there. So I, that's that's what makes it like amazing to me. So I had like a wonderful time. And of course, I did cry when I was about to leave because I didn't want to leave. Um, but my mom did promise me. I don't remember if you guys remember, but back in October, when I see my mom, when I went to New York City to do the RPG show, she was on my vlog and she did say that she would come to Arizona with me if I was to come and get her. So she did promise me this. So I just purchased a ticket last night a round trip ticket to um new york well i had the way i had to do it was i had to purchase a one-way ticket to new york so i'll go from here to albany um new york which and then i'll go to schenectady because well i'll go from here to schenectady new york and i'll stay there for a week and i'll visit with my son my grandson my daughter-in-law my husband and then i will get on the greyhound bus and i will go to new york city which is only like three hours away and I'll stay there for just one day and then me and my mom will board um, the plane at LaGuardia Airport and we'll come here for like two and a half weeks and then I'll bring her back home and then I'll have to come back by myself. But 
it was so worth it. So I will be back in April, in April, to get my mom and stuff and bring her here. And it's so cool because it'll be my daughter Tati's birthday. So she'll get to spend it with my mother and we'll do a makeover on her. We'll have just like so much fun and I will convince her. We all will convince her. I hope we will convince her. Lord, please let us convince her to move out here. She is so stuck in her ways and she really don't want to, I don't know what it is, but she just really stuck in her ways. And I really want her to be on this side of the world with me because I know that it's better for her here. And also because I'm here and I could take care of her. And like, you know, I do have a sister who's 31, but she don't really be around my mom like that. Like they live together in the same apartment, but my sister goes to work and then she goes to her boyfriend's house in the next building. So she don't really spend no time with my mother like that. Um, she doesn't, not she don't really, she doesn't, you know, my mom just always is complaining about that. Not even complaining about it, but she's always telling me about it. And my mom feels alone. And so I feel like, you know, it's time for my mom to just leave where she's at and just that overcrowded place and move here because it's much more warmer for her. And I just think that, you know, because of her age, I just feel like she's better off here now. You know what I'm saying? It's just a little bit slower pace, but there's a whole lot of stuff to do. And if she wants to get a job here at Burlington, there's a million of them. She travels two hours to get to work, okay, which makes no sense. She doesn't drive. She uses public transportation. So that makes no sense to travel two hours to get to work. And I just don't think that it's good for her. So I'm really hoping that when she gets here, she has an amazing time and just feels like, you know what? I don't want to be in New York anymore. I want to come here. And I will figure out a way to get all her things here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Not her furniture because she's not really concerned about that. But I will figure out a way to get like all of her fabric and her sewing machines and stuff like that here. I will figure that shit out. Okay. I will ship it here. Whatever I have to do, I will send it here. But I really think that it's time for her to move her ass over here. So hopefully me and my kids are able to convince her. So other than that, um, yes, I've had a wonderful time and I cannot wait to, um, go back. Um, and, um, trying to figure out, um, hmm, what I have been doing with my time, really, really nothing much. Um, like I said, I just came back and I'm just trying to get back into the groove of things because I have been gone for not so long, but you know, I have to get back into the groove of things because I was not recording any videos while I was going. The only time I recorded a video was for Real Talk and that was it. I had plenty of videos that was already edited to upload to YouTube while I was gone or to possibly, um, edit and upload. So I had like a really great time doing that. And I guess, you know, I got kind of used to not having to record. So I had to get back into the group of things. Also, I do have a video that went up yesterday for my weight loss journey. So if you guys want to check that out, you can definitely go ahead and do so. Um, but, um, I wanted to share one thing with you guys before I do so. Um, in case you guys are wondering, I do wear a body waist trainer. Um, now, I, I know you guys, I have complaints, and I'm just trying to find it right here. Okay. So I know I have complained in the past about waist trainers and I mean, I really don't like for them to be uncomfortable. I hate for anything to be uncomfortable. Um, and with that being said, I just try to be, um, more reserved with my clothes because I just don't like to be uncomfortable as well as that. Um, I don't like, um, I don't really, you know, basically I am wearing a waist trainer and I wear the ones that are comfortable to me. It may not be as tight and restricting as some of those with the boning and all that. I do wear one of those as well, which is this one right here. So I do wear this one as well. Okay. Um, and this one is the three hook prong and it's like a latex kind of material. So I only wear this when I'm going out and or I'm exercising because it is a little bit more um, restricting and I really don't like the boning in my side all day long. So I only wear this when I'm exercising or I'm going for my walk. Um, it is a little bit more comfortable than it used to be. It has a three hooks 
And I'm over at first when I started, I was like right here on the first hook and now I'm in the middle. Um, I think Mike could try. I might could be able to try on this side, but either way, um, I do like it because it's not as uncomfortable as some that I have tried, but maybe because I've got the right size. I did try this other companies, but you know what? It was very long. It was a little bit longer right here and it was kind of like digging into my side. So this time around, so I do get these from mylilydeals.com. That one was from my lily deals and the one that i have on today is new and i got this a few days ago um well i got this i ordered this like before i left and um i ordered this one before i left let me just i'm trying to get it to you guys i ordered this one before i left and hold on guys so I want to get to it. So I ordered this one that I have on before I left and it came while I was going on vacation. So this one that I have on is the breathable spandex waist trainer fitness vest. And I got it in a size extra large. So this one I really do like because it's like you don't see it as much. Like you don't see it. It's very, very comfortable. So you can't tell that I have it on, which I do like a lot because you don't see like the zipper or the boning and it doesn't bulge. But okay, so it's a vest. So I'm not trying to flash you guys or anything, but it does come up here so it's all around it's all around and it's just to it comes to like right here okay so it does have like um a zipper but it also has the hooks inside of it but the material is very breathable and it's supposed to help you sweat a little bit more and you'll be a little bit more comfortable and it's also able to conceal you a little bit more so it does help in the concealing um it does not roll up so i've wore this for two days since i've gotten it because today is only tuesday and i came back on sunday so i've been wearing this two days um so it does help um it doesn't roll up in case you guys are wondering does it roll up or where it goes down to it goes to right here okay so it goes to right here and i have had some that will roll all the way up to here like seriously and i hated that so it doesn't roll up which is great um it's very easy to put on but also it's very comfortable so you know, I still do have to lose this right here, but I do like it because it also conceals it down here. But also because I do have another vest and this vest is a lot more comfortable than the other one that I have. I have two more vests and the other two vests that I own are like the latex material, which is very bulgy. Um, it's It just shows everything. And also the straps on my other one are very wide. So these straps right here are very thin. Okay. They're thinner. So it also helps in like, if you're wearing something small, like a little sundress or whatever, you don't have like these really big, huge wide straps. So that's the one thing that I do like about this one. Also, when you have like your, um, sizing or your your fat over here like i do it kind of like spills out so i do like that the fact that it conceals it but also i like the fact that it's very comfortable and it also just like hides everything so this is one that i can wear all day without complaining now it is tight but it's not like uncomfortable tight um it's not going to snatch you in totally um, which, you know, if you're looking for something that's going to snatch you in totally, but you don't want to be super uncomfortable, then you can, um, look on their website. They're called My Lily Deals. It is a, um, hold on, focus camera, focus. Okay. So it is a website. Um, it is an, it's, it is an American based website in case you guys are wondering. And it does take like some time. When I say time, it'll probably take like I want to say like two weeks for you to get your order, depending on what you order. They have a ton load of different type of body garments. And like I said, this one that I have on is the breathable spandex waist training fitness vest. Okay. So they have a bunch of them. I will give you guys a code. If you want to save um, $15, you can use that and free us shipping on orders of $75 as well. So you can eat 
easily get carried away on this website. They have like loads of them, as I was saying. They have the ones that are just for exercise, um, like the Extreme Thermal Power Hot Body Shaper, which is super cheap. I find like a lot of their weight weight waist trainers are a lot cheaper than like if you go into those that like um like Black China sells them and they sell them for like triple the price. You can definitely get them same exact items here at My Lily Deals for like a fraction of the cost. They also do explain to you what each waist trainer does, which is really, really great. Um, and I do like them. Like I said, I do like them a lot. They have all types. Um, and like I said, they do explain to you what they do and they do run up to, um, larger sizes like six XL. And if you're concerned about that, um, and also they have, um, like I was saying, they do have free shipping. Um, I'm trying to find the one that I got so that way I can tell you guys all about it. Um, let's see. They have shapewear, control panties, bras. They have sales going on active wear. If you want to buy a gift card from someone, you can definitely do that. Okay. So mine's is the waist training vest. Okay. And what's the breathable spandex training fitness vest. So mine's was $48.99, which was great. And it's on sale for that. They was normally $70, but when I first seen it, it was for the same price. So I don't know if it's really a sale price to 70, but whatever. So it just helps take, um, and I'm just going to read you the description of it helps take inches off your waist with the premium adjustable waist training fitness vest. The waist trainer is designed to work right away and you will see immediate results due to the slimming nature of the item. When worn under clothing, the item is undetectable. The only thing people will notice is an enhanced hourglass figure lifted bust and flattened midsection so it does say features visibly reduced waistline of one to four inches so at least it's honest with you and tells you like you ain't gonna get all these inches um firmed and flattened midsection recommended wearing it for six to eight hours posture correction ideal to use at work home and a gym post-pregnancy restoration premium high quality spandex material and it also does give you a size chart so in case you need to know what size you are you can definitely look on a size chart they um um there are reviews from people that have just purchased them, which they have rave reviews. And I do like them because it's easy to put on and I'm not sitting in pain. I ain't trying to sit here in pain and be like, oh my God, OMG, I cannot breathe. Like, I'm sorry. I can't do that. Like, it's bad. I have like a lot of different waist trainers and I, I, I was all for them. I had like this really positive attitude for them, but I can't sit there and it felt like they were digging in my skin and they were hurting and like... Once I start feeling like that, I am not trying to wear that shit all day, okay? I'm really not about to wear that shit all day. So I give up after a while. So that's why I said I only wear that latex one when I'm exercising. There has been a few times, not like a bunch, when I have not taken the vest off after a walk. Now, when I normally come home, I will walk to, for two and a half miles, and then I will come home, and I'll eat breakfast, and then I will clean the house up, and then I will take a shower. And so this one particular day, I did all of that, but I didn't even get into the shower. I ate breakfast, cleaned the house up, and then I had to go somewhere with my son. So I didn't get the opportunity to take a shower yet. So I had my workout clothes on, and I also had that vest on. So I think the most, the longest that I've ever worn that vest was probably like six hours, which wasn't so bad. Um, By the end of like six hours it was digging in my skin that's why i took it off but i don't wear that shit all day I'm, i just can't i can't commit myself to wearing something that's going to hurt me all day so my waist training or my weight loss figure may take a little bit longer than some but you know what hey i'm just taking small steps i'm not trying to be like a supermodel overnight but i will definitely say check out my lily deals if you want something to help you lose weight or help you look good in your dress you ain't necessarily got to lose weight just to wear these um, you can just use them because you want your clothes to look neat and you want to look good in your clothing. So, I mean, you know, like, Hey, it is what it is, but I'll definitely put you a code down below where you can receive $15 off every little bit helps. So I hope you guys use that. And like I said, it's my Lily deals, the shapewear experts. So I will definitely post the info below for you guys. And yeah, make sure you check out my weight loss video and let's get into this real talk. If you have a real talk that you would like to talk about, you can send me an email to muffinismylover2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the subject line, real talk. 
And if you want to change the names of the characters, the people, whoever in your email, you can go ahead and let me know that in the email. Hey, April, I didn't change the emails. I mean, excuse me, I didn't already change the names. Um, if you don't do that, I'm going to assume you did or I'm not going to assume. Either way, go ahead and send me an email, please, from the subject line, Real Talk. So on that note, let's get into this Real Talk, y'all. Huh? 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 What? Yeah. Okay, you guys. So, dear Miss April, good day to you. First, I want to start by telling you how much I enjoy your real talk. It really makes my day, and I'm always looking forward to another week of hearing it. Anyway, you can call me Erica. Please ignore the first message sent by me. That was not properly edited. So Erica then went ahead and freaking wrote me two long ass emails. Okay. Like they weren't that long, but they were long. But, um, and she freaking resent me them, resent me it because it wasn't well edited. Now, if that's somebody who really is like, I want to make sure my shit is sent right, then thank you very much. So dear Miss April. Okay. Um, I am from Jamaica, but I got married and now I live in New York. My problem is with my mother, and this is really a long story, but I truly need help. For as long as I can remember, my mother was the type of person to be biased. If you were her man or boyfriend, she would support you. Buy them cars, open a grocery store for them, and basically give gave them everything that they asked for. The thing is, though, she has three kids at that time, two girls and a boy. She only ever took good care of our brother. And we, the girls who were much older than our brother, were barely ever given anything. I used to think that maybe he was the smallest and that is why he received the most care. But as we grew older, I realized that she had a fetish for men. My mother treated us really bad in terms of making us have no bras or pads, sanitary pads to wear. And even when we were used to to go to school, it did not make much sense for us to attend school because we had no books. We only have one uniform each between me and my sister. My brother, though, is a whole different story. He received everything and more. At the time when all of this was happening, my mother had a great job. She was an accountant at a bank, and I know that she could have done better for us, but I don't think she really wanted us, her daughters. See, she had us when she was young. She had my sister at 16 and me at 18. Yet I still think that was no excuse not to love us and treat us that way. When I was 12 years old, Miss April, I got molested by my grandfather. My mom had left us one Easter holiday in the country with her family to go away. I just can't forget this and I'm now 36 and it has haunted me for years. I recall she didn't do anything about this because my grandfather was her husband's father and he was a pastor, so they kept quiet. A year after that, my mother got herself into a lot of trouble. She stole a bunch of money from the bank she worked at and she was sent to prison for three years. I thought my stepdad would take care of us when this happened, but all he did was take my brother away and left us to suffer. My grand uncle and his wife ended up taking us in. While they already had two other kids looking after, and they only had two beds, in the end, they made the four of us kids sleep together, and we had to sleep across the bed with our feet hanging over. It was better than sleeping on the floor. They were so poor that many times we had to eat dumplings with butter, but I was so grateful for having a roof over my head. I was never able to go back to school after the age of 13, and I had to help my uncle's wife sell things on the street so we could eat. After three years, my mom was released from prison and she came for us. But by then, my big sister got raped and had a pretty little baby girl. My mother only took me and went for my brother. I think prison ended up making her worse. I thought she would get back me. I thought she would take me and get me back into school, but she did not. She only got my brother back into school while she started to sell ground food and she made money from it. She still had her bad ways and she loved it. As she went back to doing the same old thing, supporting men. Her husband had left her while she was in prison. Then she met this guy half her age and she worked so hard and bought him an old bus. I remember having my period and asking her for a sanitary pad and she told me straight up, I must go fuck for it.
I am writing you with tears in my eyes because it still hurts. My mother is a sick person. How can you tell a young miss that she needs to go fuck for sanitary pads? I was 16 years old and I was not sexually active. The young guy she was dating at the time told her to move to the country area to where he lived, move in with him, and that she must take my brother, but she must leave me. And she did indeed leave me on my own at the age of 16. She had a friend who had six kids of their own, some were my age and the rest older. My mother went to, to look for the lady to ask her if I could stay with her. Her friend was poor, but she was a good woman. And she told me to come, come in. She let me sleep on an old couch while her daughter gave me some old clothes to wear because I had nothing. When they cooked, they gave me little if any was left because there was just too many mouths to be fed. I never saw my mother for months. After that, I only heard that she was in town sometimes. I heard she came to Kingston every week to sell, but she never came to check on me. I had to fend for myself, and I just never knew at that time that when you begged a man, that they will beg you back for sex. But I had to eat and wear a pad, so I did what I had to do. My mom's relationship did not work out, so she came back to town, and she rented a room near me. So I went to look for her, and sometimes I would beg her for food because she sold ground food. I asked her if I could live with her now, and she told me no, because she had a new guy, and he visited her sometimes. She was all I had because I didn't know my father, because she gave me to the wrong man, and she found out, and he found out that I was not his, and he disowned me. Men have abused me physically because they knew my situation. When I finally became 18, my mom told me to come live with her. By this time, I had a job in a bar. And I wasn't working much, but I gave her money. She ended up meeting the next man during this time, and he was ripping her off for all she had. She bought him a bike, and she support his house with food and sent his kids to school, while this man lived with his children's mother. I thought I was big enough to talk to her overall that happened, about what happened, and that she needed to stop supporting men. And you know what she did? She put me out of her house one night. I slept on the streets that night. The next day, I found a girlfriend of mine, and she took me in. The guy who owned the house started to make passes at me, and I didn't like him because he had a lot of women, and he told me straight that if I didn't fuck him, I couldn't stay there. I went back to my mom to ask her if I could move back in, and she said no because she needed her man. My story has much more, Miss April, and I think I will do a part two in the story. The thing is, though, I can't forgive her, and I am living in America now, and she doesn't even have my phone number. I hate her, and I always cry thinking of my past. She curses us badly. It still happened even as we became grown women. She told us, suck her out. I don't really know what that means. I have tried many times to forgive her. Even in 2009, my mother and my big sister and I joined together and we bought a house. At the time, my mom was the only one paying NHT. NHT is like SunTrust Mortgage, but we gave her the money to pay down on the house after everything came through. She called the police on us telling them it's her house because the house was purchased in her name alone because of the NHT. I left in the end and she took over my side of the house, renting it, and I didn't get my, my, my money or anything. Now she's fighting my big sister to get her out while she fucking used us. I hate her. Please tell me what to do because I'm lost and I just feel like I'm at the end when it comes to my mother. She wants to make friends with me. Sorry about that, guys. That was my daughter. I hate her. Please tell me what to do because I am lost and I just feel like I'm at the end when it comes to my mother. She wants to make friends with me and is always sending a message to my brother through my brother to me. I need your help. Thanks, Erica. I will write again to finish the story. So basically, you guys, Erica don't need to write again to finish the story because I I mean, like, unless her mother done did something since then. But um, from what I get, 
Her mother is a total bitch, okay? I'm sorry, but you got your kids. You're living in another country. She's in America now. You got your kids. You leaving them with this and that person because you so involved and worried about fucking men and fucking this and that one. And then your daughter telling you she getting molested by her grandfather and you ain't doing nothing about it. And then you leaving her with people that can't even afford to take care of her. So her kids done, Erica done grown, have, has done grown up starving and then pub and then, and then starving didn't have the right tools for puberty, like sanitary pads and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? She then, you know, went from home to home, molested, raped her sister and been raped and had the daughter out of it. Like, this is like a whole bunch of shit. And basically her mother ain't nothing but a fucking low down dirty bitch. Okay. And I could totally understand why you would hate her. Now, here's the thing. I would have never, this is just me. I don't know about the rest of you guys, but if that was my mom and she did me like that, I'm not about to buy no motherfucking house with you, bitch. You're not even about to come stay in my home, okay? Let alone have my phone number, let alone have my motherfucking address or my Facebook or my Instagram or any type of social media. My, I'm not fucking with you, okay? Point blank, period. How you going to tell somebody, your own kid, when they ask you, can I have um a sanitary pad, go fuck for it? And then you guys bought a house with her. So I can I can understand maybe your love for your mother is so much more stronger than your love than her love for you guys. And that's probably why you guys felt the need to like, we can all buy a home together. Maybe you felt like she had changed. Maybe you have felt like, you know, you know, things have been different and she's just a totally different person. And we are here in America. And so she's not like that no more. But she really pulled the wool over you guys' eyes, Erica, unfortunately. And she fucking dogged you again, which is unfortunate. So now you got this house that you done bought with your mother, you and your sister. And it sucks because the house is in your mom's name, okay, from my understanding. The house is in your mom's name and she done put you out, called the police and told the police that this is her home to get you out. And now she's trying to get your sister out by fighting with her. But yet and still, she's trying to be friends with you and send messages through your brother to you. Listen, if the deed is in just your mom's name, then I'm not really sure how to go about getting this out of her name. But I'm pretty sure that you guys have some type of paperwork that you can bring her into court. You know what I mean? Like small. I don't even think that this would be considered as small claims court because small claims court is like, I think it's like under two or three thousand dollars. So this is definitely not considered that. But there has to be some type of system. Um, well, me personally, if it was something like this, a home involved and you've given your portion of the money, there's got to be a record somewhere on your part, Erica, that you have taken out so much amount of money to give to your mom and what it was for and on what date, you know what I mean? So if you have a bank and I'm pretty sure you do have a bank account because you had to give your mom a certain amount of lump sum money, I'm pretty sure that you can find records that you took this money out of the bank and what you took it out for. And what I think you and your sister need to do is get a lawyer together. You know what I'm saying? Get a lawyer together and plead your case to them and let them know what has happened because I don't really feel like it's fair for her to get away with this. Like you just can't walk away from some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like it's unfortunate that she has done this, like in my personal opinion, and I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that feels this way. I wouldn't have fucking bought anything with her. And I definitely wouldn't allow her to put her name on anything. You know what I'm saying? Because she's already done did y'all dirty, regardless of what it was in the past. I don't care. You've done enough dirty shit to me to allow me to see what type of person you are. And maybe we can allow you to live with us. But bitch, we're not buying no motherfucking house with you. You know what I'm saying? I think when people buy homes together, I think that people that buy homes together should be man and wife or wife and wife or husband and husband. Or, you know, some people do buy sister and sister buy a house together. But then I, when I see like sisters and sisters buy a house together, I start thinking like, okay, well, what if this bitch one day find a man and then she get married and she want to have a family What the other sister supposed to do move out, but y'all done bought this house together. So I just kind of like shun away from certain things. Like if that's if like, if my sister wanted to buy a house with me, I'm not buying no house with you. First of all, you don't even have no kids. I got kids and grandkids and 
I've been married. You haven't. I don't really care for your boyfriend because he's a simple minded son of a bitch. Her boyfriend is simple minded. He's a nice person, but he's just simple. And I don't really want to live with you. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it would kind of be like very inconvenient to me. And then what if I decide like, hey, I want to, you know what I'm saying? Or she decides she wants to have a family and something like that. It just doesn't work out like that for me. So I just, you know, some things I kind of like stay away from. I know a lot of times people don't buy homes together, like sisters buy homes together and things like that, or friends buy homes together. It's because money situations. And like for me personally, if it has to do with money and it's a money situation, and I can't afford it on my own, then I guess it's not right for me at the moment. And it's not my time. I just wouldn't buy a house with my sister or a house with my sister and my mother. I don't know. I'm just really funny like that because everybody's predicament changes in life. You know what I'm saying? Like now with my, like I would buy a home and I wouldn't even expect my mom to chip in. You know what I'm saying? Like she could come live with me and it, it would be her home also, but I wouldn't want her to spend her money. But as far as it being me and my sister and my mom buying a house together, I wouldn't do that. I just wouldn't do that because it's just too many different clashing going on. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know. Women together in one household sometimes can be very, very clashing and very, very picky. And especially if you've already been through some shit with that motherfucker, I just really wouldn't have put myself in that predicament. But I'm pretty sure that you guys have some type of records that state you were all buying the home together. Regardless if your mom is the one that's paying the mortgage and stuff, the mortgage is being paid with your monies. So I really do feel like, you know what I'm saying? You guys have some type of record that you guys can use to plead your case. You know what I'm saying? Just don't allow her to get away with this shit again. Like I totally understand why you hate the bitch. Like I don't even know her personally, but I hate her. Like, I have three daughters and two sons. You don't treat none of them any different. Now, if you fuck up, I'm fucking you up. And if you fuck up, I'm fucking you up. I'm not going to fuck you up because she done fucked up. I don't do shit like that. Like, I've known many families, like, one kid fuck up, they all get an ass. But I'm not doing that shit. Like, I don't do that because each kid got their own personality. And if you did some fuck shit, then you getting your ass kicked for it. Or you going to punishment. Not everybody in the house, not all the kids are supposed to go through the shit because you did some shit. But I know that... Your mom, she's very evil, very motherfucking evil. And like she said, she have her, her fetish is men. I don't know if that's a fetish, men, because I like them too. You know what I'm saying? Um, I prefer that than women, but um, she don't have a fetish. It's not a fetish. It's just that she's a selfish person. She's a very selfish human being. And I really feel like you guys should have cut ties with her. A long time ago, you know what I mean? I would not have placed myself in this predicament with this lady. Like, you know, once a liar, they say it's always a liar. And your mom is a liar, a snake, and a fucking bitch. Like, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful to you by calling her that. But I just think that for her to treat her own flesh and blood like that is like a horrible thing to do. Like, there are so many bad parents in this world that don't even deserve children. It's, um, it's like ridiculous. And then we have those who can't have children or can't even adopt. And they could be like the best person in the world. And they are never in their life be able to experience having a child or even having a child in their life. You know what I'm saying? And then we have these women that are just like so hateful and just so selfish. And all they think about is me, me, me. It's all about them. You know what I'm saying? And they could care less. It sucks. And like, you know, I've had issues with my mom and I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who's had issues with their mom when they were growing up as a kid. You know what I mean? Like me and my mom have had like blown out arguments, um, never any physical stuff because I don't get down like that. I'm not about to be fighting my mom, but we have had blown out arguments and shit. And um, I just feel like, you know, that's just what happens in life. Like everybody has an argument with their parents. I've had arguments with my daughter, Tatiana. I've had arguments with my son, Wuzzle. I've had arguments with my son's drawn. I've had all, I've, I've had arguments with my old, my eldest three. Now, is it, is it respectful? No, it's not. I don't really think you should argue with your mom. And I think as I get older, I realize that like, you know, but you know, shit happens. It's a part of life. 
we're all going to have our differences and we're always not going to get along. Meaning we're always not going to get along. Okay. We don't always have to get along, but by the end of the day, we still have to respect one another and we still have to love one another. You know what I'm saying? But we've all been through that. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who's had arguments with their parents. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I will say this. Even though I have many, I have seen different between me and my mom many different times. She, you know what I'm saying? She's setting her ways and I'm setting my ways. Some of the things that I may have said to her or have done may not be politically correct. And some of the things that she has said or done to me may not be politically correct. Neither one of us have been right. But I do know this. She has never, ever mistreated me like the way you have been treated, Erica. You know what I'm saying? She, yeah, she's put me on punishment for a year, a year. And yeah, she spanked me and like, and put me or put me in a corner and forgot to get me. I hate that. But maybe I deserved it. Um, and maybe there was something that I did that had provoked her to do that. You know what I'm saying? But I will say this, like, you know, it's unfortunate that your feelings towards your mom is hatred. And so, and hate is a very strong word. Like hate is very, very, is a very strong emotion. You know what I'm saying? Like to hate somebody, that is a super duper strong emotion. You know what I'm saying? And I think when you hate somebody, they have to really have gotten you to that breaking point. You know what I'm saying? Cause like we don't go around hating people. Like we say that, but like, you know what I'm saying? You could watch somebody on YouTube and be like, well, I can't stand that bitch. I hate her. Like you can't really hate somebody that you don't know. You know what I'm saying? And I've, I've noticed that like people say things like, oh, I hate them and I hate them. And you don't even know that bitch to really hate her. So you watch her on YouTube and you hate her. Some people just use the word hate as a word. But then there are people like Erica's case who really feel that way emotionally towards a person. Like I can totally understand why she hates her mother. Shit, I hate the bitch and I don't even know her. OK, but her feelings of hate is a lot stronger and hate is a strong fucking word and action and feeling. And it's unfortunate that she got to feel like that about her own flesh and blood, the woman who gave birth to her. But you know what? When you hate somebody, like really, really hate them, like the way you do, Erica, you have to disassociate yourself with them. Like on some serious shit, you have to disassociate yourself with them. Like your mom, you need to not associate with her because all it's going to do is make you fucking miserable and it's going to allow you to hate her more and more. And you don't want hate to consume your heart. You know what I'm saying? You don't want hate to consume your life. How you feel about her is how you feel about her. But the thing you need to do is get her out of your life and get her out of your system because on some real shit life is short and your lifespan can be shortened just by hating somebody and by feeling miserable and she makes you feel miserable and I can totally understand that and when we feel miserable even if it's this little bit of miserable trust me our lifespan is shortened and we're not totally happy I feel like if you was to be totally happy it would be for you to get rid of her totally now when I say get rid of her totally means does not mean take her out end her life it does not mean that means Leave her the fuck alone and disassociate yourself with her and don't never fuck with her again. The only time you are to fuck with this bitch is when you see her in court, you and your older sister see her in court with your lawyers getting your motherfucking house back because it's two against one. Okay. Two against one. Now I'm pretty sure your brother has facts, has, you know what I'm saying? Proof that you three women were buying a house together. Cause I'm pretty sure you guys share that information with him, but yet and still sometimes we got to sit down and we got to sit down and we got to relax and we got to take ourselves out of the element and think, okay, what did I do on this particular day that I can use as leverage towards my ex mother? I call her ex mother because ain't no real mother act like that. Go fuck for it. And I'm not really sure what suck you off. Like she said, Erica said, her mother said, suck, suck her off, suck her out or suck her off. I don't really know what that is because she's from Jamaica. If there is someone who is from Jamaica and knows what that means, that lingo means, like, can you please write it below what it means? She said that her mother said, it's a long email. Okay, hold on. Um, she told us, suck her out. I don't know what suck her out means, but it doesn't sound like anything positive. So if somebody knows what this means, please below, right? What suck her out? What? Hmm. Okay. Um, 
Yeah. Your mother has a long history of bullshit in her life. And you know what they say? It's called karma. Okay? When you continuously do evil and bad to someone, it's called motherfucking karma. Okay? You are going to get yours in the end. And there's nothing that you or your sister need to do to fucking make her karma come true or come just like this. The only thing that you guys are going to do, because this is not karma, is gather yourselves together. Gather your thoughts. Take notes. Write it down. Get a book if you have to. Whatever receipts you got, bitches. Whatever you have bought for the house. If it was a faucet, motherfucking refrigerator stove. I don't give a fuck what it was. Get your receipts together. Get your notes together. Get your thoughts together. Write them down. What you guys did on this day. How you gave her the money. Go back to the bank and look that history up. You know what I'm saying? And put all this down and then get yourselves a lawyer together. Because you guys don't need separate lawyers. You and your sister need a lawyer together. Okay? And open up you a case against your, your mom. Because rightfully the house is all three of you guys. But... You can easily have it taken back and have her fucking ass removed, okay? I would love to be there the day she is removed from the motherfucking house. Like a fly on the wall. Or not even a fly on the wall. Just April standing there like, ha ha, bitch, now what? Like, you know what I'm saying? And she's not even my mom. But I just feel like this lady is like evil. Pure fucking evil. Like, seriously. So, me personally, I wouldn't let the hatred consume me. Because it makes us bitter inside as people. It really makes us bitter inside. And sometimes, you know, when we really dislike a person and we allow it to consume us, it just makes us really bitter. And I, there are people that I really don't like. I, I don't know if there's anybody that, you know what, there is one person that I hate, okay? And that is my ex, not my ex-husband, okay? Because I love him. But, you know, the one that I got rid of, Jamel, okay? I hate him. The one who bought me the camera and the laptop, not the laptop, excuse me, my computer. The one who I had living here with me for a few months, okay? Remember how I used to say, like, you know, I can't wait for him to go, and et cetera, et cetera. Like, I hate him. He's a snitch. Um, He's literally a snitch. He tells on everybody. When I say on everybody, just to get himself out of trouble, out of jail, look short in his sentence, he's a snitch, okay? I have the receipts to prove it. And on, not only that, but he's a womanizer. He's an asshole. He's a horrible father. He's I hate him. And he has done things to me in my life that I have I will truly never forgive him for. But um, you know how they say you can forgive and forget. I won't forgive and I damn sure won't never forget. That shit, I'm gonna forget the shit because I'm gonna use that as a learning tool in my life. And forgive forgive you for what, nigga? You ain't shit. Like, um, I feel like sometimes when you forgive somebody, it allows them just to just to that it just makes me feel like they done got one over on you or it allows them to do the shit again. And I just don't rock like that. But I ain't going to be vindictive and do some shit because I don't get down like that. But, you know, what I'm saying he has had his karma fucking with me. All right. So that's a plus. And you'll continuously get karma, Jamel. That's just what you'll get. But I truly hate him. And um, I don't never wish death upon nobody, but. If you were to get struck by a Mack truck, I wouldn't feel bad for your ass. Mm. But, I mean, like, I don't, like, now I don't let the shit consume me. In the beginning, I used to, like, just really be wanting to be very vindictive and do shit. But now it's like, please, you ain't worth my time because I ain't got to do shit to you. There's going to be somebody else that's going to do the shit to you, okay? Um, but I do know this, like, those type of people, we have to get them out of our lives, like, we don't have to do vindictive shit because when we do vindictive shit to people that we really don't like, then they feel like they got one up on us and that we really do um, still have feelings for them or we really thinking about them. You got to you gotta leave those people the fuck alone. Just like you leave your mom alone, leave her the fuck alone and let her live her merry life. She going to see herself living on the streets the same way that you had to live on the streets, Erica, is the same way that bitch going to be living on the streets. So like I said, you and your sister get together, get your receipts, your thoughts, your, your, your shit together, write it down and get yourselves a lawyer and get your home back and get that bitch out on the streets too. You know what I'm saying? That's just what I would do. Did you guys see my new fucking head wrap? Okay, so this is a head wrap that I bought 
while I was in New York, okay, with my mom, and it was in the subway system we bought it. There's like, you know, little stores, and it's so cute because it was $10. The guy had a bunch of nice little scarves, and my mom actually had one at home, and she didn't tell me this, and she could have just gave it to me, and I didn't have to buy this one, but whatever, now I have two because she did give it to me, and I love these little head wraps. It's a nice scarf, too. Oh, my God. It is really supposed to be wrapped around your head and your neck or whatever, but... I like it just for this fashion, you guys know. And yeah, anyway, so let's get on to the next real talk, okay? All right, you guys, so here we go. And I like the fact that she put her letters nice and big, okay? Hope you guys can see that. Like, look at the letters, the lettering. Like, I can see this because you guys know I can't see for shit. Now, so she named the subject The Real Talk Diary of a Sad Bitch, okay? I like that. Um, I think that's what I'm going to call this video, all right? Dear April, girl, you need a hotline for the real talk. Hashtag the real talk. Laugh out loud because I know you're going to talk trash about the length of this letter. LOL. Just joking. But for real, for real, have you ever just sat back and thought to yourself, damn, my life, was sh my life should be a fucking movie. It would be a sad all over the place fortune of events because this is how I feel right now. I can totally relate. I'm like legit to my damn breaking point. First, I'm transgender, 24 years old. The only person in my whole family who stuck by me is my mom. It's been just me and her for so long now. I've had sex with four men in my life and never once been taken on a date. Like, what a shame. I have men always just want to use me for sex, but never, not once, would I be accepted as girlfriend material. Which is fine. I totally understand if people don't want to have to go through all that. But I wish I could find someone who is above what others think. Good luck in little old Georgia. I work for a call center and am I awesome and I work for a call center and I am awesome at the job. I know everyone thinks they are awesome, but they use me for training purposes. And my numbers show that I produce good numbers. However, it's funny as hell to me that I never move up. Yet other people around me who aren't as good and stay goofing the fuck off move up to higher positions. I talk to the bosses and they never have time or tell me shit like be the obvious choice. What the fuck does that mean? I guess I'll stop sobbing and shit. But like, damn, it really sucks because I feel like I've worked so hard to become the person I needed to be while others are handed shit. Hell, I just want to feel comfortable in my own body. Meanwhile, I see others just accelerating and moving on, having families and being happy and shit. And here I am stuck. I did actually find a guy, we'll call him military, who I've been with on several occasions. And he is the first person I have ever felt really comfortable with sexually. He's waited four damn years trying to get with me, but I was too scared at the time. He was not just there for sex, but I could talk to him too. He had this own he had his own place, truck, military, and educated. But by the time I finally got the guts to be with him, I only got a few months and his deployment was over and he had to move back home. And of course we weren't to the point of like making it work. And now he's gone. Who knows? Maybe he was like the rest and never intended on being serious with me. But all I can think about is him moving off, getting married, having a beautiful family and a nice home. And yet here I am not going anywhere, stuck at a dead end job. And I can't even escape my thoughts on why I can't even have what every woman wants just because of the type of woman I am. Shaking my head. Sorry, but I didn't have no one else to talk to. Thanks. Much love to you and your beautiful family. XOXO. I've attached some photos so you can see what I look like. At least one is me and my mom. Yes, I know. She looks like my sister. And she's so pretty. Okay, like, so for real. First of all, girlfriend, Um, let me tell you guys something. Did she give herself a name? <clears throat> no, she didn't. But we're going to call her beauty. Okay. So first of all, beauty. Um. She did, um, her makeup is bomb as fuck, all right? Bomb as motherfucking fuck. Her hairstyle is on point, so I'm feeling that blonde, okay? And, um, I can't even do my motherfucking lips like that. I have been trying forever to learn how to do my lipstick properly, and I just can't. 
But Beauty here, I'm just saying. She's really, really cute. She's cute. She's super duper cute. And as for her mom, now here's the thing about her and her mom. I'm, I, I wish I could show you her picture, but I can't. Um, her The only way that I would have known that it was her mom is because Beauty has blonde hair and her mom has dark hair. Um, like she's a brunette. So that's the only way that I would have known that was her mom. Because other than that, they look identical, identical in age and just identical, identical in general. So your mom is beautiful and she does actually look like your sister and you are beautiful too. And so um, I can kind of relate to how beauty feels. Even if beauty is a transgender, we all go through shit in life. She is a woman. That's what she is. And she feels like she's just being walked over. She doesn't have the same opportunities as other women because of the woman that she is. And I'm not really sure if the people at your job are aware that you are transgender. Either way, it shouldn't even matter. But here's the thing. You don't want to ever feel like you're stuck somewhere or stagnated. Like, I say this to people all the time, beauty. Like, if you feel like you had a dead-end job, sweetheart, and you feel like you have been there and they are using you for the benefits of training purposes, but they just moving other people up in the ladder who don't even deserve it or who just ain't working for it, then, sweetheart, don't get stuck. Don't be stuck and stagnated at a job. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what you feel like. That's the only opportunity you have. There is so much out there in the world to explore. You know what I'm saying? And from the looks of things with your makeup and stuff, you can do, you can take up cosmetology. You can take up a load of different things, but I wouldn't feel like I needed to be stuck at a dead end job. When we feel like we stuck, then we have to do something about that shit. We can't just sit around and cry about it. We got to get up off our motherfucking asses and do something about it. If you feel like you stuck, then do something about it. Look for a new opportunity. Look for something that's fun. Now, I have worked in a call center before as well, many, many years ago. And I'm going to just be honest. Some things are not for everybody. The call center thing was not for me. I worked at that desk for probably like three months, and then I got promoted as an administrative assistant because the girl got fired. I was taking her spot when she went to lunch, and she was rude. They was tired of her attitude. They liked me, and they fired her and hired me. Great. Okay. Um, but just as sitting there and working at a call center, I can't do it because I felt like it was just, just boring to me and my ass was to be hurting from sitting there all day. And I just, I don't like to do repetitive stuff. However, you know what I'm saying? It's a great stepping stool. If you understand what I'm saying, meaning you worked in a call center, which is like a customer service, it's customer service. And you're talking to all different types of people with all different types of um, attitudes, all different types of personalities. So you got to kind of like adjust yourself to that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like when I worked for Amazon, remember you guys, I had my working from home job and I worked first. I started off working for Walgreens and I worked for Walgreens for probably like two and a half, three years. And I worked from home for Walgreens. I got this job through this company called Arise and I answered calls. I was a customer service representative through their phone number, and I would help you with your photos, um, anything that was wrong with your photos or your orders, or I would help you find things on the website or orders, you know what I'm saying? And I met all different types of people, not met them, you know, physically, but over the phone, I've dealt and met with many different personalities, okay? And I had to adjust to that. The same thing goes with Amazon. I, I went through the same company, and I worked with Amazon through home customer service, and I loved the job, and I met over the phone, many different people with many different personalities, and I had to adjust to this shit. So, Beauty, you have done that through the call center, and I feel like that's just a stepping stool for you, which means that you can go out into another part of the real world and open up your skills and allow your skills to flourish. You ain't got to sit there and wait to become a manager, a supervisor of a call center, and like basically say, why weren't you the choice? And, and the, your bosses are saying to you, become the obvious choice, whatever the fuck that means. You know what I'm saying? Whatever the fuck that means. But you know what? When somebody don't want to give you an opportunity, then you go knocking on that opportunity's door, meaning take what you've learned from this job and apply it to somewhere else. Okay. Don't sit there and just keep crying about it. That's a call center. I'm not moving up, you know, I, but I can totally relate to how you feel about other people do shit or don't do shit. There you got other people that don't do shit, don't barely do anything and get all of this clout, get all of this um, publicity, and do all of this shit. And here you are, you are working to the bone and you don't even get ahead. You don't even get noticed. You don't even get shit. 
I totally can relate to that. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you how I can relate to that by the whole YouTube thing. Okay. So in case you guys are aware, and for those of you who are not, this ain't my motherfucking first rodeo with YouTube. This is my third rodeo, meaning my very first channel that I started back in 2008, very, very late 2008 or 9, um, when YouTube's platform looked totally different, um, that was my first channel, and it was hacked. It was hacked back in 2012, and all of my subscribers that I had, which was 80,000 at the time, they wrote to YouTube, I wrote to YouTube, they would not answer or reply to anybody, and I never got my channel back. So I had to start over a second channel, and I did that. I started over a second channel when I moved here, and that was suspended due to like the URLs that I was using in my video, and also a company, a China-based company used my URL, and it just was bringing a lot of spam, so they shut my channel down. Whatever. So this is my third channel. And the thing I hate about it the most is when I first started YouTube, I was like the second black woman on YouTube to do wig tutorials, okay? To do wig tutorials. Um, there was me, it was Atiyah, and it was Love Kisses 99, okay? And as you guys know, we're aware, me and Love Kisses 99 were like the best of friends. And we've, we've had a falling out over the past year or so more. And I'm not really sure what it was about, but we just stopped speaking to each other whatever. Um, I miss her. Yes, I do. Um, but it was us three and there weren't any videos of women doing wigs. And then they slowly trickled on like Miss Shonda or Philly Diva. And you know what I'm saying? And it slowly became like a thing, but you know, I, I was popping and everybody would come to my channel. And I was like, you know, I was, I was given the props that I deserve. Now here it is now. I've worked so hard for everything that I have, and I see like things have changed over YouTube. And there are so many YouTubers that don't even bear, they don't do shit, but get all the clout. Like, okay, so we got these prank channels or reaction. I'm gonna use reaction channels as better. These YouTube channels that all you do is sit there and you watch them watch a video and react to it. Like, I'm sitting here watching my own stuff. Like, Oh my God, no, she did I don't think that that's doing much of anything. I don't really want to sit there and watch you react to something you're watching. Like, to me, it's all fake. So you get all of this publicity and views off of watching somebody watch somebody else's video. Like, how creative is that? You know what I'm saying? So certain shit like that, like it really irritates me because it's like here it is someone like me who puts a lot of time and effort into shit. And though it may be like I do just wig videos or makeup videos or whatever, it's still the fact that I am working hard at what I do and I don't get the recognition. So I can totally understand how you feel because, you know what I'm saying, I could totally understand how you feel, okay? Or we have some women who do wig videos and when they start the video, they don't even have the fucking wig off. They got the wig on. It's already styled. You know what I'm saying? They're not giving you no type of pointers or tips of how to fucking style the wig. It's just on their head already. And they're like, well, I really like this wig. It's cute. It did tangle. It got a part here. Like, okay, so bitch, you just had it on already. You didn't show me how to style it, how to make it look realistic. You didn't do none of that. But yet you got a million views. And here it is. I got the same video, the same wig, and I done showed you the inside of the cap, how to put it on, how to style it, how to make it look natural. And I done got like not even nowhere near the amount of views you have. Like, that's the shit that pisses me the fuck off. And it's like, it starts to make me feel like, maybe I should just do videos not doing shit. But then that's not the type of person I am. So what do I do? I just, I, I, I try to beef it up and I just, you know what? I stop worrying about what other people are doing and I just do me. So the same thing goes for you, beauty. Stop worrying about those people at your dead end job and find yourself something better. OK, don't be stagnated. Don't worry about what the fuck they got, because as long as you worry about what somebody else got and you don't got or how they got there and you didn't get there, it's just going to stagnate you and it's going to piss, it's going to piss you the fuck off and it's not going to allow you to grow as a person. So you need to grow as a person and go out there and find new opportunities. Now, as far as the dating scene goes, sweetheart, let me tell you this. I don't think the dating scene is anywhere the same as it used to be when I was growing up. And I thought about that a few days ago when I was with my mom, you know, what I'm saying they got all these girls who just go 
out. They like the tender thing. They, they want to have sex with guys just because they don't want to have relationships. Some people don't want to have relationships anymore. They just want to do this online dating thing and meet up and fuck. Like, really? What type of shit is that? Like, I want to be with somebody who loves me and this is a real relationship and we doing real things together, not slide to the left and come hit me up and come get some of this. Like that shit ain't cool. So I don't think like the dating scene, I know for a fact the dating scene is nowhere near how it used to be. And it's unfortunate because there are people like myself who love a good, true romance. And you know what? This is how I feel like to some people, my husband may not be the handsomest thing in the world. Okay. Okay. But I will tell you this, he is a gentleman and he had his own issues, which was drinking and he has changed those issues, which I'm very, very proud of him for. Um, but I do know this. He treat me like a queen. He is a wonderful person. Okay. And, um, I'm just happy that I was able to be able to find someone who really, really, truly, 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 truly does love me instead of meeting with some guy who just wanted to fuck me. You understand what I'm saying? Um, because I have met those too. And let me tell you guys, it's not really that fun. Um, but you know, it seems like sometimes when we looking for love, it's always in the wrong places and we end up meeting with somebody who's just a fucking jerk. And it's unfortunate that we have to look for love on these websites. I just say like, if you're trying to find a man, definitely don't look on websites for him because I just think it's trickery and foolery and it's not for you. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes when you evaluate who you are as a person and you find happiness and peace within yourself, then that right person comes along. But until you do that, you're not going to find the right person. You're just going to find some Tom, Dick and Harry who just want to fuck. And that's unfortunate because people are like that. Not just men, but women too are like that. You know what I'm saying? That's why women use these apps. And if you use these apps, I'm not judging anybody, but that's just not my thing. I'm not into that. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not into apps of, you know, maybe, probably because I already got somebody, but if I didn't have somebody, I definitely wouldn't be into Tinder and shit like that. Like I've tried the, um, online dating thing before you guys know that. And it was just crap. You know, I got the white boy who was just interested in being dirty. You know what I'm saying? And all he ever wanted to do was talk about black women. Like I think that was his fetish, black women. Okay. I, you know, you never know what a person, I think that was his fetish of just trying to date black women. He just loved black women. You know what I'm saying? That's all he, he liked was black women. But you know, that's just, you know, unfortunate. And that was just like my turn off right there. That was like, ah, I'm done with that shit. But it's unfortunate that, you know, we have to come across these type of people. Now, for one, when you say you can understand that people don't want to make you their girlfriend, some people are not into that. You get it. You can't understand that because beauty, you want more than just a fuck. You want a relationship. You want someone to love you for who you are. So let's not sit up here and lie and say, you understand that you get it because some people are not into all that. Some people are, which is you, which is me, and probably a whole lot of women that's watching this are into a real relationship. You got to give yourself time. Sometimes our negative energy, you know what I'm saying, feeds off and it, it just drags and it just pulls in the wrong type of person. You know what I'm saying? When you have like this real positive energy, which from your smile, it seems like you have a beautiful personality and a beautiful soul. You know what I'm saying? Just I could tell people from just from looking at them, you know what I'm saying? And from just looking at beauty, she has like this beautiful soul and this beautiful personality. Just her smile alone. You know how you can look at somebody and you can just tell by their smile or just the person that they are that they have like this very personal personality that is just so pretty. You could tell that they're a good person. I could just look at you and tell. And from just looking at you and looking at your smile, the type of person that I feel that you are is not the type of person that wants to just have open sex or just fuck with somebody just for fucking. That's the type of person that I see in this picture. That's not you. You know what I'm saying? And when you have a negative energy, you just, you, you, you allow negative people around you, whether you know it or not, people, when you are miserable and unhappy, even if you're not showing it to people, but inside you still are, that negative shit just draws towards you. And I guess that's like with me, like 
I don't have negative energy anymore. Sometimes I do, but my thing is this. I don't allow drama in my life no more. Like I don't tolerate it. And I guess that's why I don't have friends. I have no friends right now. When I say no friends, I mean, I don't have no friends. Like my friend Rebecca, my best friend, I can't even consider her my best friend no more because of the shit she did to me. Like it wasn't really that bad, but I'll just give you guys a rundown of it real quick. She called me up and was like, listen, I'm coming to Arizona and I'm going to be staying at my father-in-law's house, which is around the corner from you. You know, I don't want to stay over there. So what are we going to do for the weekend? We're going to hang out. So we made these big plans. And on Saturdays, I normally do videos all day. But because she was coming, I was so excited. I was like, well, call me when you get here. Cause she had to drive and she was tired. She, she, she texted me at four, 3 AM, 3 30 and told me she was here and that she would call me in the, she would call me in a little bit, a few hours, let's get some rest. So that Saturday, I didn't do anything. I sat around all day waiting for her all day. And finally, at, cause I don't like to be a pest, but finally at 4 30, I text, I called her. She didn't answer. So she returned my text message at six o'clock in the evening, told me she was in Tempe at her mom's house having dinner. Now Tempe is a 45 minute drive and um, she would call me when she was done. Okay, whatever. I felt like, okay, we can still go out and have drinks like we planned on. Even though I don't drink no more, I'm gonna still go out with her and have drinks cause she liked to drink. Okay, we're gonna have girl time like we planned on. We made all these plans. So when she when she was almost back out here in Avondale, Avondale, because she still has her home here. She has a house here that she owns and her son, who's 20, lives at the house, but he also has roommates. So she was like, you know, call me up. She was like, well, I got to go to my house and clean it. And I was like, what? Because Anthony got the house a mess, et cetera, et cetera. But Brenna, which is her daughter, which was Mumsy's best friend, she want to know if she could come over and hang out with Mumsy because she want to see her. And I was like, okay. Sure. Then she was like, well, what are you doing tomorrow, Sunday? I'm doing videos. I have some videos. I got to go to work. I got to work. So she seemed like on the other and she got silent. So I went home because I was at, I was around the corner at the store. I went home and I was telling Tati about this. And then I thought to myself, you know what? Fuck that. I'm not going to watch your daughter while you go home and clean your house. You had me sitting around here all motherfucking day long waiting for you. We had plans and you didn't even have the decency to call me and tell me that you was going to your mother's house. Like, I didn't care if you went to your mother's house. That's your mom. That's fine. The decency is what pissed me off. You could have called me and let me fucking know that you was going to your mother's house. And then I would have did what I had to do. But you didn't do that. I wasn't angry about her going to see her mom i was angry at the fact that you didn't have the decency and then i was also angry at the fact that you came back out here to avondale from your mom's house and you expected me to watch your daughter while you cleaned your motherfucking house that's not happening either needless to say sunday came and went she, i told her that i was going out with mumsy and that i wouldn't be here so brenda couldn't come over I wasn't going anywhere, but I wasn't watching your daughter. I said, hit me up tomorrow. She was like, okay. Needless to say, Sunday came and went. I didn't hear from her. I didn't call her and I wasn't bothering to. I didn't hear from her through the holidays. I heard from her about a week before I left to go to New York, this trip. And she was like, hey, I miss you. I've been looking through my phone at your pictures. What's up? What's going on? I didn't even respond because I don't have time for this. Like, you're not about to be treating me any kind of way. So we not like, I'm, I, I, the thing with me is I will definitely leave you the fuck alone. I won't fuck with you if you not on my, not even on my level, but if you do something wrong to me, I don't fuck with you. Now here's a new one. She's not even a new friend, but you guys have heard me talk about Devin. Well, she lived here in Garden Lakes. I met Devin through the birthday party. I told you guys that she's a light skinned, she's black woman, whatever. She has a daughter and son, whatever. She was going through some shit with her ex-husband. She invited him back into her life, whatever. He he kicked her out of Indiana, didn't give her none of her shit, and she moved here with nothing with her kids and the clothes on her back. So she invites her husband, her ex-husband back into her life. I don't even know if they really ever got married. Anyway, he came here, was dogging her out. She finally got him out the house, et cetera, et cetera. Now she being all depressed and I'm, you know, cheering her up and I'm talking to her, whatever, giving her advice. You're the only friend that I have. You always calling me and checking on me, blah, blah, blah. Thanks. She offers me a ride. Now she's the one who took me to the airport back in October and picked me up. Now she was like, well, I'll bring you to the airport this time. She offered me and I was like, cool. But I did also ask her, I asked her if she would please pick up Mumsy in the morning and bring her to school and stuff because her daughter's in Mumsy class. She agreed to it. 
Okay, but her daughter takes the school bus because her daughter lives exactly a mile. Mumsy can't take the school bus because we live closer. But I didn't want Mumsy to walk. But she said, no problem, April. I will walk her. I will come and pick her up because she works from home. She makes her own hours. <laughs> so whatever. And her mom also lives with her. So whatever. Um, She comes and picks me up to take me to the airport. Now, I told her to be here at such and such time. She came. I said, Devin, come in the house because I'm running a little bit late. Give me like 15 minutes to come in the house. She was like, no, girl, I'm going to sit out in my car and wait. I was like, all right, you sure? Because you can come in and, you know, get something to eat, bagel, whatever. She's like, no, I'm going to sit in my car and wait for you. Plus, I got the jacket for you because she was going to loan me this jacket. Good thing I had a jacket already. Anyway, 17 minutes exactly. Okay, I said 15. It was 17. All I needed was like three more minutes because I was bringing my suitcase downstairs. Did this bitch text me talking about I'm really tired. I'm going home to go back to sleep. You can get an Uber or um a, um a Lyft. So because the person that I am, I would normally just flip the fuck out and cuss you out. No, I didn't do that. I was like, oh, well, go home and get some rest. I'm sorry to have you wait in. I understand. Thank you anyway. So she left. She didn't even leave me the jacket, whatever. So you're going to come and get up at three o'clock in the morning to come and sit here and do nothing and then go back home. Whatever. I ended up taking a lift and just missed and, uh, and just made it in time for my flight. OK, I probably waited like 15 minutes, whatever. No big deal. So I didn't want to be rude or nothing because she still had to get mumsy. So anyway, two, she had to bring mumsy to school Thursday and Friday and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Friday came and excuse me, Monday came, was it Monday? Monday came and she texts me, well, I got me a part-time job with staffing agency. Really? So I can't take her. Um, this was Monday afternoon. I was like, okay, that's fine. Tati will bring her to school and take her and, mom, and, they, will, and they will get her from school because Nay gets out at two, which is right directly across the street from Mumsy who gets out at three. Nay can hang around her school with her friends. She was like, well, I can get her today. I was like, don't bother. Tati said that Nay will get her. No, it's no bother. I was like, no, don't even bother. Fake shit is what I'm talking about. You ain't got no part-time job, bitch. Just be real about your shit so I cut her the fuck off too. How the fuck you, you know what? That's what I'm talking about with people in general. That's why I don't have no friends because of the type of person I am. Because I know me, I'm not going to have negative energy around me and negative shit. I'm not going to allow negative shit. So I felt like her... And her bullshit was negative shit. Even though she was whiny and depressed, I was trying to help her get through that. But she just didn't see the light. So I had to cut you off. Rebecca, you didn't want to have courtesy. And you didn't want to have the DC to call me. I had to cut you off. Then there's my other friend, Nicole. Let me tell you something. I don't have time for it. I'm 43 years old. I don't allow no bullshit in my life. So what I'm trying to tell you, beauty, is this. Don't allow the bullshit in your life. You have negative energy. You have to get out of that stage. And you have to move on with yourself. Get yourself a better find, a better job. Move up in the ladder of opportunities. You don't got to sit around and wait at no call center. You never know. The new job that you get, because I feel like you will eventually step out of that box, may find may find you a better job and also may find you the man of your dreams or someone who you would like to start a relationship with. You know what I'm saying? When you stagnate yourself, a whole lot of other shit gets stagnated. So also realize that you're still young. You're 24 years old. Let's not try to rush things because sometimes we try to rush shit. It don't get us nowhere but at the bottom. You know what I'm saying? It's a stepping stool and it's a stepping stone to everything. It's like slow, turtle steps sometimes. We got to take it one step at a time. You know what I'm saying? Because for one, some people will not accept you for the person you are, which is unfortunate because we all human. Whether we transgender or non-transgender, we all human. So for, for, for some people, we got to take it little steps at a time. So for you, I just feel like Use your skills that you have learned at the call center as an opportunity to get yourself a better job and start feeling better within yourself. You know what I'm saying? And that way, as the person you are, and I'm just saying this because of the smile that I see on your face in this picture, you will draw in more positive, which means more positive energy, which means more positive people. You understand what I'm saying? Get out more. Hang out. If you don't have no friends, hang out with your mom. You know what I'm saying? You and her go out and have mom's, um, mom and daughter day. You know what I'm saying? That's what you're supposed to do. Enjoy the time with your mom and have a day out. You never know. You might meet somebody just from just hanging out with your mom. For real. So on that note, you guys, I got to go get Mumsy. It's now 2.58. She got out of school at 3.10. And I love you guys. It's glad to be back. I will see you in a soon-to-come video. I got to do me some wig videos when I do get Mumsy. So, yes, I'm going to have a busy, busy week. So leave all your opinions below, your suggestions, or what have you. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, thumbs this video up, and share with everybody you love.